Hey y'all, I Sneaky Pew Pew here. Today we're going to be exploring fluid tanks. Now, when it comes to using these as fuel tanks, you might be thinking, I already know how to add a fuel tank. Uh, you just connect a pipe to it and then connect it to your engine. And you're not wrong, but there are variables at play here that you might not have thought of or noticed. So I'm going to go over them, what they could mean, and how these might affect the way you build. Let's kick this off. Okay, so what we have here is we have a single tank, 31.25, right? A dual tank. You can see the values here aren't the same. We have 26.33, 27.11. The difference of those being 22.20 is what you add when you add a tank to the bottom. That's, that's the extra capacity that you're adding. You can see 31 times 2 would be 62.5, right? But it's not, it's 53. So you only get 22.20 every time you daisy chain a tank into like that. Well, for the small tanks at least. I wanted to demonstrate with this experiment for you what fuel does in this game as far as fluid dynamics um, and what, what the developers have, have built into the game. Now, this isn't really something that's make or break, but uh, it's definitely something to be cognizant of. So just watch what happens. We have 26.72 on both tanks. If we just input a value, of 1 and we can't that over watch what happens the 27 fills up the 25 drains so the left tank that's on top here it drains into the bottom tank now I'm not sure if this is something that's really relevant you know if you have a really wide vehicle and you have a tank all the way to the left and a tank all the way to right you know say like you had a plane or something with a wide wingspan we might ask ourselves, well, will all the fluid from the left tank drain into the right tank when I, when I turn? Um, and for that, let's make an experiment. Okay, so I've created this experiment, and it's got both fuel tanks, one and two, up there and up there, and they're just strung together with a straight pipe that goes from one end to the other. We're going to test if all the fuel drains from fuel one into fuel two. Okay, it looks like it did with a cap of 31.25. We know that's our max capacity for that bottom tank. So let's try to put a bigger tank on this end, and we'll see if we can get that to zero. Okay, so I've had a little bit of issues with this. Adding a big tank on the left side through the numbers all whack. So what I've done is I've added three small tanks on the left side, and I still have the one small tank on the right side. I've even brought these up a little bit so the bottoms of them because what we know is that the bottom most tank is going to have the most gas in it. Um, but it appears that even though that's so much higher, the gas is still averaged out. You would think that this would have collected all of them, but it didn't. It actually pushed into these three. So we have a value of 16.10 for our right tank and 7.71. Um, which is a uh, sum of all three of these. But I think it'll still work. So what we'll do is we'll just change the value here and see, does it go to zero? Yes. Yes, it does go to zero. So if there's anything to take away from this experiment um, is that if you have fuel tanks on, on both ends of a craft that are going to rotate, you know, maybe not to this degree, but at some at some degree, Nonetheless, you're going to have some fuel leakage from one side to the other. So, And uh, we'll just move on to the next experiment. All right, guys, we're back in the lab. i got three configurations on the wall in front of me. Uh, I've kept these three um, from all the others that I've made and deleted um, because they just illustrate some of the, the logic here in the game and how these tanks work. So we'll start with the first example. This example illustrates that you need to have a pipe connected to each tank to get its full potential. Now, when I say full potential, you'll see 28, 28, 28, 29. 29 is the bottom most one. We learned that over here because 115 is not 31.25 times 4. 31.25 times 4 is 125. So, if you figured out a way to get a full max potential by either daisy chaining these or some other configuration that I haven't figured out, 
uh, with my experiments, you throw it in the comments and let me know. I would be eternally grateful. But I've experimented quite a bit, and this is what I've come up with. All right, for example number two, we have daisy-chained two on each side. And you'll see that the outermost tanks have the most fluid. Now, this is a bit peculiar because you would think that, oh, they're just they're all level, they're all going to even out. Well, that's not the case. Um, and I don't know why that happens, but it's definitely something that you can keep in mind. Uh, you know, daisy chaining is, is not great. We've already established that, but just something to keep in mind. All right, so for our third example, we have uh, just basic to cover what we've, we've done in the first two examples is that, you know, each tank has its own pipe, and we haven't daisy-chained anything, and uh, we can confirm that the bottom two have the most fuel. Now, they, they don't fill up to 31.25. Uh, haven't actually got them to fill up to 31.25, um, but, you know, you can experiment with that if you want, but that's just something to be mindful of. All right, so for this next string of tests, I've configured a gang of different variations that are displayed. I've even configured more than that, but these are the ones that made it to the wall. Uh, basically going over all the things we've learned from our past tests, right? So with the first example, we've just stolen number three from our last example, and we've daisy-chained the ends. And you can see that, again, the outermost tanks hold the most fuel. A considerable amount of difference there. A difference of 11 point, you know, whatever. But that's a lot of fuel. So it's just something to keep mindful of. And we just wanted to verify that, you know, that, that was the case. For our next experiment, you'll see the values are the exact same for fuel 204.32. Two, uh, we just tried to tip it on its side to see if uh, we could get any variation on which tank holds how much. Again, though, you'll see it's the two most outer tanks that hold the most. I don't know how that works. Um, I'm sure it's something with uh, the programming of the tanks, but uh, uh, just keep that in mind. It's something to be aware of. All right, moving on to our third example. We have the best overall outcome so far, 240, right? What I've done here is we've made sure that every pipe or every tank has its own pipe and there's no daisy chaining, but they are right next to each other. I wanted to confirm that that wasn't a deal, that it, it looked how it should. So it does, all the bottom tanks here have 31.25, which is great. That's the first time we've gotten that so far. And the top tanks have dropped to 28.97 roughly. So this is probably the best configuration I've gotten so far, but I wanted to try a few things extra just to be sure that I fully understood everything. So I went on to example number four. All right, in this example, we have tried daisy chaining every single tank all the way from one end to the other. You got one pipe that goes in and zero pipes in between. So we know that obviously we're gonna have diminishing gains, right? But it's, it's crazy because it's done this extreme again. 31.57, 31.25. The first tank gets all the full value, 31.25 allowable. And the rest of them kind of just go to 20, with the last one being, I don't even know. I have no idea what that is. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of strange, but we know, already know that daisy chaining them is not a great idea. But we've just, we've just verified that, yeah, that's a bad idea. So on example five, you can see we're having some issues. Now I tried to delete some tanks and some pipes and stuff and remake them and see if I could resolve that. I've even just deleted the microcontroller that I have that adds these up and also the microcontroller that I have that pushes out to the display and recreated them and it just seems to keep doing the same thing. I think it's probably in the programming then. Um, so we've given each tank its own pipe, right? But we've spread them out one, one pipe at a time, just to be sure. Um, and you can see the same thing is happening here. It's trying to even out, it looks like, but it just cannot. If we compare the results from, from this guy, where 31's at the end, 30's at the end, and the 20's are in the middle, we don't get the same thing over here. We get a fight here to average all of these. So it looks like it's just going crazy, you know. It might be a little less efficient than three. Uh, so we're moving on. Moving on to number six. 
So at number six, you can see we have the lowest of the eight configuration output. And because we've daisy chained these again, and uh, this is just to confirm, yeah, even with this one, we've gone the same values, and I wanted to see if it would go crazy again. It didn't. But look at the difference, 160, right? Even though these top tanks aren't actually tied in to the, the sensor that's going to read and, and, and add these up, I thought that maybe daisy chaining them would still, you know, it would fill it up, and then we'd have a 31.25 value on every single one, right? Or at least higher than what we had. But the opposite has happened. We have 20 on all of them. Even the last one, even the first one, 20. And the ones on top are the most extreme, like we said before. We're the farthest away from the pipe. So, of course, they're going to take 31.25 on all of them. Now, you could probably cheat this in some way to put tanks that you don't use on a bar that you don't use and then have the values from all these other tanks fed into your actual engine with the 31.25. Now, that'd be one way to get the full potential. But the problem being that you have all this extra space that you just taken up for no reason. Why not just use a bigger tank? and have, you know, the diminishing gains, because I'm sure it would add up uh, to be a better choice. So that's something to think about. All right, guys, so moving on to the next, we've just taken the same design from six, and we flipped it on its head, just to kind of see what would happen. Um, the bottom most, or the top most here, 31.25, the same thing has happened here. It's the bottom most. It doesn't matter the orientation. It's always going to be the farthest from the pipe. I just This is another example of that same rule there that we've uh, we've established. All right, that's about it. I hope you learned a little bit about how the tanks work in this game, and this helps you implement them in your creations. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and we'll see you next time.